John, you've been involved in the World Evangelical Alliance for many, many years. Yeah. How important is this moment in the life and the witness of the WEA? Well, I think it's tremendously important. As the chairman of the RLC, I've seen in recent years increasing antagonism and persecution which affects all Christians. And the RLC is? Religious Liberty Commission. And what does it do? Uh, we monitor persecution in other places. We advocate religious freedom for everybody, every human being on the planet, including those of other religions. and. We advocate that everywhere. So what is the case of religious persecution in the world today? It's getting worse. It's getting worse all over the world. Really? What, what places, for when, what conditions, uh, what triggers persecution? Uh, per what triggers persecution is preaching the Christian gospel, giving the good news about Jesus Christ. And you see it all over the Islamic world. You see it in India, in the Hindu world, in the Buddhist world, in Central Asia. Everywhere where the gospel is preached, including the West, there's opposition to it as we read in the New Testament. Is this become, is becoming aware, or are people noticing this around the world? Or is it an issue that's kind of cloaked in the, in the prisons of persecution? No, it isn't. In, in a place like India, it's getting very much more strident, and everybody's in the Christian camp is involved, so that evangelicals and Roman Catholics are painted as one in these places. And so what will this document do? It'll show that we have got standards and that what is said against us is a caricature of the real uh, position and that if there's an aberration from these standards, it's an aberration and that not our standard stance. Now would other religions accuse Christians of persecuting them? Yeah, they always do, yeah. And is it partially true? It's very, very rare that that's true. But there, there are some instances of persecution, and we, as part of the Religious Liberty Commission, we want to ensure that they have got their rights too, and that there should be no persecution. And this document embodies the principles on which we preach the gospel, and the respect and dignity we afford to every human being. Is there any possibility this document will moderate or hold back evangelicals in proclaiming the evangel of the gospel? Not in, not, not in no way. This document uh, states very clearly that we have got not only the right, but we've got the command, Jesus Christ, to preach the gospel. That is not compromise at all. So how would the other bodies, the Vatican and the World Council of Churches, in a sense, be co-opted or be willing to, to agree to that which is so much a part of the evangelical uh, uh, ethos and motivation? Well, the Roman Catholics preach the gospel too. Now, in some respects, is, you know, there are differences. But imagine yourself as a Muslim. Do you differentiate between Roman Catholics and Evangelicals and other Protestants? No, because we, as Christians, we rarely see Muslims as Sunni or Shia. We just regard them as Muslims. Right. So that anything which happens in, or across the world which besmirches the name of Jesus Christ affects us all. So that's why all these major religious Christian communities have decided to do it together. Yeah, indeed. I mean, say an evangelical does something which is clearly wrong, it affects the Catholics. If the Catholics do something which is clearly wrong, it affects the evangelicals. Because from the outside, we are all Christians. And so we had to do something together to ensure that we hold and we proclaim common standards. Now, historically, this seems to be a, a bit of a first that you have 90% of the world's Christian leadership agreeing on something so fundamental as preaching the gospel. Well, maybe, but throughout the Middle Ages when the, the Catholics and the Protestants um, disagreed and fought one another, it was all about the gospel, but it was about a different gospel. But now, on a world stage, we've got to get together and proclaim the liberty of every group to preach the gospel. What might this do in a locale? 
uh, where there is religious turmoil. How might this document help? It'll help in that if it's alleged that this is the Christian way of doing things which is wrong, we can point to this document and say this is our, uh, our contract. That we, this is the wording which we've agreed amongst ourselves. These are the standards which we adhere to. And if someone adopts standards which are lower than that, we, 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 we can judge that person against our new rules, which they're not new rules, really. They are rules which we have tried to adhere to throughout the centuries. And where do those rules come from? From the Bible. It's oh, oh, so it's according to the teachings of Jesus? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where we and the Roman Catholic Church have agreed on this document, because throughout this process, we've turned to Scripture alone as our mandate. And that, that, for me, is an evangelical. That has been a wonderful um, revelation that we didn't turn to the magisterium of the, of the Roman Catholic Church. Throughout, it was the, uh, the words of Jesus Christ himself as, as to how he wanted us to go about the proclamation of his gospel, both in word and deed. So to live as Jesus lived is not a bad standard. It is the only standard. Thank you.